The beautiful land of Great Japan is often the target of the cunning of the wicked, but citizens need not worry or fear, for there are samurai who watch over the land. They are the master samurai. A master samurai is multiple times greater than a normal samurai because they've made a pact with a general. One such general is Munya Kira Yagyu. On this cloudy day, he returns from a six-month journey to improve his skills as a general. This preparation is necessary for the inevitable return of one of Great Japan. Japan's greatest threats, Shiro Amakusa. On the steps to the Yagyu Dojo, Matabe Goto welcomes him. She stops her sweeping to accompany Mune Akira to the dojo. Dreading the moment he sees the interesting changes it has undergone, his beloved dojo has now transformed into the true shadow made cafe. Mune Akira's second master samurai, Yukimura Sanada, appears to take all the credit for the change. She points out that moe on the gate is the keyword for making money. To prove this, Mune Akira's first master samurai, Akane Jubei Yagyu, demonstrates the cafe's trademark greeting, but it just ends up making the general blush. Seeing the dojo's interior, he immediately drops to his knees in despair. Yukimura explains that Rayman's shock is to blame for this change. This is the financial crisis that broke out after the collapse of the mortgage bubble. Because of this, the dojo's military funds were obliterated, so they need some way to earn money to survive. That's a good explanation explanation, but Mune Akira asks, what about the prize from the government? After all, they sealed Amakusa. Before Yukimura can explain, San Tokugawa, the generous third master samurai, appears frustrated about her clothes. Seeing ample tatas, tatali tataing makes general blush. San runs off in embarrassment with her ninja servant, Hanzo Hattori, running after her. When San returns, they discuss the hero who sealed Amakusa, and yup, instead of their group, San older brother, Yoshihiko Tokugawa, and a blue-eyed master samurai were officially recognized as saviors of Great Japan. That's why they didn't receive any reward and needed to turn the dojo into a maid cafe. Mune Akira wishes they had chosen a more respectable trade, but the girls quickly demonstrate why this is the best money-making business. Only in maid cafes can you sell omu rice for almost double the price. After all, if they cancel the cafe, they'll have to hand over the dojo in three months. The general face palms. How could they put up the dojo as collateral to secure a loan? Eventually, Mune Akira can only sigh and resign the dojo to this moe fate rather than lose it completely. At the mention of danger, the general suddenly realizes they seem to be missing someone, but the girls say it's just his imagination. Poor Kanetsugu Naoe, the self-proclaimed warrior of love, is out handing out flyers while she's being forgotten at the dojo. However, she does end up angry throwing the leaflets into the air. Why is she even in this creepy abandoned cemetery? Yukimura must have tricked her. After ranting to herself, Kanetsugu hears a voice and sees a girl standing by one of the large tombstones. Then, another next to her and behind her. Where did they come from? The redhead grabs one of the flyers, saying it sounds like a great place to visit after reviving. Wait, reviving? Are they supposed to be ghosts? As if to answer the maid's question, a pink-haired girl materializes out of thin air. She asks, asks the rattled Kanetsugu where the Yagyu Dojo is. The four girls soon arrive in front of True Shadow Maid Cafe. Did that maid girl trick them? How is this Moe Moe Cafe supposed to be Yagyu Dojo? Before they can leave, the gates reveal four maids posing seductively. The customers are ushered in and given a plate of Omu rice, despite not having ordered anything yet. Raising a bank card, the pink-haired girl, Musashi Miyamoto, tells the others not to worry. They've got plenty of money. Money. Hanzo instantly recognizes it as a Tokugawa authorized black card. Yen fills the Megane's eyes. These girls are VIPs. After Hanzo leaves to prepare their VIP course, Matabe and Jubei give them first class service via a spell. Moe moe kyun kyun get yummy get yummy. Musashi stands visibly irritated, but then, to her companion's surprise, she joins the incantation. As the team plans on how to rip off the VIPs, Jubei introduces herself, but the customers don't believe her. Jubei Yagyu is a master samurai who is strong enough to seal Amakusa Shiro and not some moe moe kyun kyun maid. On the contrary, Jubei is strong. If that's the case, Musashi challenges her to a duel. Hearing this exchange has Mune Akira and the others rushing to the guests. How 
do they know about the government secrets? Matabe takes Jubei aside. Musashi and her companions don't answer the question. Instead, she says they've been looking for Mune Akira because they're here to crush the dojo. They take the fight outside, not because they have a plan, but because they can't afford it if the dojo needs repairs. Before the battle begins, Kanetsugu arrives. Her friends discover she's to blame for these rowdy guests finding their dojo. Well, what's done is done. That's why Kanetsugu is here to take responsibility and deal with them. Kanetsugu attacks with her sledgehammer, but as the dust settles, the redhead holds up her unconscious body. Hanzo uses her glasses to reveal their enemy's power surge to master samurai levels in a flash. With that, the three master samurais in their group have no choice but to transform. While Yukimura and Sen can transform at will, Jubei must lock lips with Muni Akira to become a master samurai. However, even after that, Jubei didn't change. The inner Jubei, the powerful master samurai within the innocent girl, has vanished in the fight to seal Amakusa. That means Jubei can no longer transform. Even with Yukimura and Sen appearing in their master samurai forms, the enemies deem they're nothing special. Who are these intruders, really? Musashi introduces themselves as sword wielders born to fight, the four dark samurai. After discovering the people of Yagyu Dojo sealed Amakusa, they revive to crush those responsible. They prove formidable, as a single attack from Musashi is enough to break the general's power. Next is Kojiro Sasaki, and Yukimura volunteers to take her on. The long-haired samurai easily break through her defense, forcing her to lose her master samurai aura. Mataemon Araki uproots a tree effortlessly with one hand, declaring she'll play with Sen. From her strength and speed, it's clear that Mataemon is on a whole nother level. She easily brings down the princess with one slash. Mune Akira is still on the ground when Inshun Hozoen approaches them. The reserved girl targets the general, sending him to a barren plain. As he comes to, he sees glowing marks on his wrists. Musashi says it seals Mune Akira's general powers. After one month, it'll eventually completely erase his powers as a general. That's as long as they'll wait. If they don't bring back Jubei by then, Mune Akira won't be able to swing his sword for the rest of his life. The next day, everyone in the maid cafe is astonished to see Musashi return as a regular customer. She even asks for the spell again, to which Jubei happily obliges. On a peaceful night, Jubei, Yukimura, Sen, and Matabe enjoy a refreshing time in the bath. Though Yukimura and Sen can hardly relax because of the dark samurai attack, since the seal's still on Jubei's chest, Muni Akira's general powers are still intact. So the problem lies within Jubei herself, and unless she transforms, they can't defeat the four dark samurai. Who are they anyway? Yukimura speculates the four must be the very resurrection of Amakusa Shiro himself, but Sen is quick to let her know that that's impossible. Even if someone wanted to revive Amakusa, the resurrection ceremony would require at least 100 years. The next day, Sen is frustrated that they've still had more break-ins than before despite all their new security measures, but Yukimura's uncharacteristically lax about it. Turns out, the thief is only stealing unmentionables, specifically the big forehead lollies unmentionables. Wait, why is Yumikura so lax when her undies are being stolen? Well, she believes only one person in this most female dojo could have taken them, Mune Akira. After being women deprived for so long on his journey, it's natural for the male beast within him to roar fiercely and make a move on their unmentionables. But Sen doesn't, no, can't believe this. She'll do a completely unclothed dance if Mune Akira is indeed the culprit. And so it begins. Yukimura's plan is to make herself irresistible because soon, the general will surely start desiring what's inside of them. After a massage, Yukimura goes to the kitchen to concoct collagen-rich food for the skin. Even Mune Akira won't be able to resist her after she eats this. Meanwhile, to prove the general's innocence, Sen has taken it upon herself to search his belongings. Nothing so far. Then, perhaps he's hiding the undies in their urinals. But Sen and Hanzo's efforts return fruitless. And just as Matabe is about to do laundry, including a bag of Yukimura's special undies, the thief strikes again. As Mune Akira walks down the hallway holding a fruit bowl, he catches a monkey's attention. The poor little dude's stomach growls, so the general invites him to share the leftover fruits. In the dojo's main room, Matabe apologizes to Yukimura for letting the culprit run away with the undies yet again. Oh, the challenge is on. It's about time they went after this shameless thief. So Yukimura lifts her leg and has Matabe with her downtown. With her keen senses, they'll surely track down the culprit. Eventually, they reach the kitchen, where Mune Akira holds up a pair of Yukimura's special 
special undies, Sen better prepare her completely unclothed dance, and as the princess strikes their pervy general, the cupboards let out an entire mountain of undies. But wait, who's that little hairy creature trying to tiptoe away? It's Sasuke! The pet Yukimura kept while she was in Ueda. Despite being its owner, the big forehead samurai can't understand Sasuke. Thankfully, Jubei speaks monkey somewhat. They learn that though she said mean things to the little dude, it still journeyed all this way to see Yukimura again. The kind dark samurai, Inshun, even showed it the way to the dojo. Later that day, Kanetsugu arrives, shocked at seeing the monkey. Yukimura argues that they already have a dog, so why not a monkey? And by dog, she means Kanetsugu. She's not wrong though, as the warrior of love bickers with Sasuke, much like a dog would do. Kanetsugu asserts that they can't afford to keep a pet because of how dirt poor the dojo is. That can be easily settled, and yup, Yukimura chooses Sasuke over the stray dog. Instead of helping Kanetsugu, the monkey writes the dog, Kanji, on the poor maid's forehead. As Sen sees a customer approaching, she declares this is Kanetsugu and Sasuke's chance to prove who's essential to the cafe. At the cemetery, Terry, Kojiro asks Musashi if giving the Yagyu Dojo an entire month is a good idea, but the pink-haired leader seems disinterested. She doesn't even care to speculate why they were all revived in the first place. Instead, Musashi is about to leave again to meet up with her, and by her, they mean the fake Jubei. Musashi arrives just in time to help settle the fight between the pets. Though Kanetsugu fails to notice that Sasuke has taken her undies, that must have been quite the sight for the dark samurai. Later that night, Yukimura hates to admit it, but Kanetsugu has a point. They just can't afford to have Sasuke around. Unbeknownst to them, the little dude heard all this and decided to leave the dojo. Jubei and Mune Akira see Sasuke about to run away and try to stop it. Soon, Kanetsugu arrives, grabs Sasuke by the tail, and throws it back to the dojo. She won't let the monkey leave when they haven't settled their argument. In Mune Akira's attempt to catch Sasuke, he falls into the pool, with the monkey following soon after. While underwater, Sasuke accidentally lock slips with Mune Akira. This transforms the little dude into a dudette. Sasuke Sarutobi. Not only is it human, but it also has the power level of a master samurai. So it seems the general's powers are still intact. Thanks to Sasuke, the true shadow made cafe is booming in popularity. Maybe the dojo can finally earn some money now. On this early morning at the cafe, Kanetsugu announces a way to boost the cafe's profits. How? To have them all compete against one another. But this this is part of the Warrior of Love's elaborate plan to eliminate Sasuke. Master Samurai or not, it's still a monkey. So once it becomes the lowest earning maid, everyone will have no choice but to kick the monkey out. After day one of the competition, Sasuke Sky rockets to number one, while Kanetsugu drops to the last place. She thinks the numbers are being rigged, when in truth, she's just not a great maid at all. Instead of working the next day, Kanetsugu decides to spy on her opponents. Sasuke is still as popular as ever. It becomes even more popular even when it turns back into a monkey. Jubei managed to nab second place because she has Musashi as her regular, while Sen and Hanzu are using their Tokugawa authority to rig the competition. Even Matabe manages to escape the last place because she has Jubei as a regular customer. With that, Kanetsugu despairs. She just can't understand why she's losing to them. Yukimura arrives to make it clear to her. Kanetsugu's losing because she keeps slacking off like this instead of working, so the warrior of love better pack up her thing soon. Desperate to not lose, Kanetsugu concludes that Sasuke's secret to popularity is its master samurai powers, so she'll just have to form a pact with Mune Akira. After doing her makeup and dressing as skimpily as possible, Kanetsugu looks for the general. She sees the light coming from the kitchen and decides to eavesdrop after hearing voices. Yukimura and Sen report that, though the cafe's customer base is steadily growing, their losses show no sign of slowing down, and that's all thanks to Kanetsugu's blood. Blunders. She's just not cut out to be a maid. Despite the facts handed to him, Mune Akira refuses to kick out Kanetsugu. She's their comrade after all. He believes she'll get better at the job soon enough. As he exits the kitchen, Kanetsugu hides and then continues to eavesdrop. But the master samurais catch her in the act. Really, this failure of a maid is so predictable. As Sen and Yukimura foresaw, Kanetsugu plans to become a master samurai. However, they doubt she has the bond and trust to form the pact with 
Mune Akira, since Kanetsugu's here to stay, Sen and Yukimura give her a piece of their mind. If she continues being a liability, she'll eventually cause the dojo to close down. Hearing their harsh words, Kanetsugu leaves without a word. Later that evening, she gathers her things and leaves the dojo for good. Everyone soon finds out Kanetsugu left and looks for her. Since Sasuke is also missing, Yukimura believes it's with Kanetsugu and must be leaving clues for them to follow, so the gang splits up to look for clues. On her way to the station, Kanetsugu is ambushed by Mataemon. Sasuke transforms into its master samurai form, but it's still no match for the dark samurai. Once tiredness seeps in, Sasuke turns back into a monkey. Though she knows she's no match for the dark samurai, Kanetsugu still wants to save Sasuke. She attacks using her sledgehammer and Mataemon strikes back, shattering Kanetsugu's weapon handle. As the dark samurai tries to crush her head, Kanetsugu orders Sasuke to run and the monkey leaves with tears in its eyes. It soon finds Mune Akira and Jubei, who got here after following Sasuke's banana peels. By the time they arrive, Mataemon is holding the battered and bruised Kanetsugu by the river's edge. Hearing the samurai's comrades, the dark samurai promptly throws her into the river. Mune Akira rushes to save her. The general carries Kanetsugu's unconscious body to the shore. While he performs CPR on her, Mataemon draws near. Jubei and Sasuke tearfully block her path. Trapped in limbo, Kanetsugu can hear the general's voice. A pact forms between them as Mune Akira places his lips on the unconscious samurai again. Kanetsugu is now a master samurai. Kanetsugu attacks the Mataemon using her tricked out sledgehammer. To Mune Akira and Jubei's surprise, their comrade's power is on par with the dark samurai's. They exchange blow after blow. Finally, Kanetsugu gains the upper hand and crushes Mataemon, or so she thought. Mataemon stands on the bridge, back to her usual self. Kanetsugu tries to stop her, but Mune Akira points out her damaged weapon. After discovering Sasuke didn't run away but tried to look for help, Kanetsugu acts like a tsundere, indirectly thanking it. The others soon join them, with Sen and Yukimura surprised that Kanetsugu has transformed into a master samurai. So, the warrior of love trusted Mune Akira enough to form a pact with him. Jubei asks everyone if they can go home now because she's starving. Kanetsugu hesitates at first, but everyone urges her to join them. The dojo is her home too, after all. The dojo slash maid cafe's inhabitants might always fight and bicker, but they still have each other's backs. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.